Hi, my name is Sebastian and today in this video I give you a short introduction to the Angular 2 HTTP client and uh, the HTTP client is uh, included in the Angular 2 framework and you can use that client as a service to access um, REST backend services and um, yeah what we are going to do in this video is to set up an Angular 2 project injecting the HTTP service, setting up a REST backend and then connecting to that backend and accessing data and presenting the data um, to the user. So um, we will use a basic Angular 2 project structure and as you can see here I have already prepared a project um, an empty Angular 2 project with a basic structure inside. And you can see we have um, various configuration files inside. We have the package.json file containing all the dependencies, all the libraries we need. We have the TypeScript configuration file and we have the typings.json configuration file. Um, so this is basically what we need for a basic Angular 2 project. Then we have index.html um, just an empty, just an empty um, HTML file we need for our project, and then all our components are stored in the app folder, as you can see here. Um, what is already prepared is app.component. This is the main component of the application we are going to build in this video, and we have the main TS file. Um, which um, calls the bootstrap function and uh, starts up our application. So if you would like um, to get through the steps which are needed to set up such a basic Angular project, you can go uh, through the five minute quick start tutorial on angular.io or you can switch to another video where I show you all the steps you need to set up such a project um, in all the details and I will put the link into the show notes. Okay, so the first thing we need to do to be able to use the Angular 2 HTTP service is to include the HTTP library and then load the HTTP module and even the HTTP module is part of the standard Angular 2 framework, it's not included in the Angular core library. So actually the first thing we have to do is to go into our index.html file and uh, include another script tag here just underneath the Angular library and um, with um, that script we can include uh, the HTTP module and uh, the module is available in a library which is called um, let's see it's called HTTP dev.js and uh, that library is already available in our project because with the npm package angular 2 we have loaded um, a set of libraries and HTTP is included in that a set of libraries and so we can access uh, the file http.dev.js in the angular2 bundles folder within the node modules folder. So that is basically what we need here. So let's close the script tag. And um, so that is what we need in the index HTML. And the next thing we have to do is to um, configure our injectors and we do that on uh, the root level of the application. So let's switch to main TS. And uh, as our library is included now, we can import um, something which is called HTTP um, providers. And we import it from um, the Angular 2 HTTP module. And so now, what is HTTP providers? HTTP providers is basically an array containing all the injectables you need for HTTP. And uh, with that array loaded, we can now inject everything in here. And we just add 
the array of dependencies, as you can see, with HTTP providers. So um, this enables us to use all the HTTP providers, all the injectables, including the HTTP client, across all the components in our application. So before actually using the HTTP service, we need to complete one more thing in our client application. And uh, that is that we need to create a client data model. Uh, so creating a client data model helps us later on to deal with the data sets we want our application to manage and to retrieve from the HTTP backend. And um, yeah. We need uh, one more file in our application and we switch to the app directory again and create that new file. And we name it bookmark ts because we want our application to manage uh, a set of bookmarks and every bookmark should consist of two properties. So um, what we need here is a simple class and we export that class as a module so that we can in include that data model class later on in our components. So let's say export class bookmark and um, yeah what we will do here is not to declare our two properties explicitly but using um, the constructor um, together with the private keyword and that is a way which um, TypeScript offers us to um, declare constructor parameters and private class members at the same time by using the private keyword right within the constructor um, definition. So it's private. The first um, property we need is title and it's of type string and uh, the next property we need is the uh, corresponding URL and again it's it's a string okay so and that is basically all we need um, we now are able to import as a bookmark data class in our components and uh, make use of this data class uh, when it comes to retrieving data sets from our um, HTTP backend by using the HTTP client. So the next thing we need is the uh, REST backend um, that we have the REST services available um, to be accessed by our Angular 2 client application and uh, we will set up a REST backend by using an open source project, which you can see here. It's called Loopback, and you can uh, find it in the internet at loopback.io. And uh, Loopback is a framework based on a Node.js, which lets you create uh, REST APIs very easily um, on the command line. And um, the first thing you need to do is to install a uh, loop back and uh, you can do it by simply copying that command here on the home page to your console and uh, install this framework by using npm after having installed loop back there is a new um, command available it's called slc and uh, with that command you can set up your um, backend project very easily. So let's switch to the terminal and see how this is going to work. And uh, the first thing uh, we need to do is create a new loopback project and we do it by typing slc loopback. So here it is, and the first thing we need to answer is what's the name of our application. And um, I will give the application the name app backend. So it should create a new directory, okay. And uh, then it's creating the new directory app 
backend and initializing uh, the loopback project so that we can directly start creating the API and uh, setting up um, the endpoints we need. Okay, it takes some minutes to do that. Okay, now it's completed. You can see the new project directory app backend with a project inside is there. We can uh, switch to that uh, directory and uh, then start creating our server model. And uh, this is uh, done by executing the command slc loop back again model. Okay, so we are first asked to provide a model name and uh, corresponding to the model class we are created on client side, we choose bookmark and um, we take that option, persistent model, um, expose bookmark via REST API. Yes, it's default custom plural form. It's not needed here because um, the S is used um, as a standard plural form. Um, we will set up a common model and uh, then we are asked to provide the first property. And corresponding to our client model, the first property we need here in our server model is um, the title property. And we again choose string as the type and it should be required. So um, that was the first property. And then we are asked to create the next property and the next property we need is URL. And again, it's string, it should be required. So we put in a yes here and uh, that is all we need. So just leave it empty here, hit return and uh, the model is created successfully. So with the server model in place, we can now start up the server, um, which is hosting our backend um, REST service. And we do that by staying um, in this project directory and simply uh, typing in node dot. So the server, the Node.js server is starting up the loopback project and uh, giving us the information that it is accessible on port uh, 3000 and um, that there is another URL available and that is uh, the Explorer URL. So uh, just copy this URL and access it here. And you can see that um, we have a nice user interface, which is called the API Explorer, which gives us an overview of our backend uh, services um, we are um, running at the moment. So here you can see here is our bookmark service and uh, a second service is in place. It's called the user service. This is a default loopback service, but our custom um, web API bookmark is here and clicking on bookmark opens up a list of endpoints uh, the bookmark uh, service is offering and you can see we have various endpoints here corresponding to the HTTP works and uh, for example we can um, use the post bookmarks link here um, to simply test that our service is working and create a first bookmark data set. So we put in here is the JSON structure and say, okay, let's create a service. <coughs> uh, let's create a bookmark with the title um, Google and the corresponding URL is, is um, Google.com and then try it out. And you can see we get the response from our API service and it basically gives us the response code 200, which shows that um, this post request was successful. And if we now switch over to the get bookmarks um, um, endpoint and try this out, you will get the result with our web service uh, with, with our bookmark 
ähm, Dataset in JSON-Format. Okay, now that we have our background um, API project ready and running, we can switch back to the Angular project and implement the logic which is needed to access that uh, web service. And uh, <clears throat> so as you can see here, um, we will do it um, by first adding a new file to the app folder in our project. And um, this file is um, called um, bookmark service ts. So what we are doing here in that file is uh, to implement an Angular service, which contains all the logic we need to access of the API of the backend. And um, that is done because um, then our components do not have to deal with any access logic um, directly. Instead, our component, our main app component where the data is needed later on will use that service um, with methods we define and not access the background service directly. Okay, so let's create that file. And uh, first of all, we need um, some import statements. I will quickly copy and paste what is needed. So what, you, <coughs> what we have here is basically we need the injectable um, component from Angular 2 Core. We need HTTP, which is our service, and uh, the response object, which is imported uh, from the uh, HTTP module. Um, then, of course, we need uh, the bookmark data model class we defined <coughs> in our project, and we need the observable um, object, um, which is uh, which you will see later on. And uh, we need some more things from the RxJS library. And uh, you will see how this is going to uh, work when we implement the class now. Okay, first of all, let's um, pass in uh, the class we need. Okay, that is a class. So here's the empty class, a class gets the injectable decorator and is exported as a module so that the bookmark service class can be used by our components. And uh, the first thing we need to add is um, a constructor. And the constructor gets one um, a parameter. And that parameter is defining a private class property which is called HTTP. And uh, this is uh, the dependency we are injecting here to make the HTTP service usable um, by, yeah, by using this HTTP object in our class. Okay, nothing more needed here. And the next thing is um, we need um, one property which is called bookmarks URL and this is um, just a string and um, we passed in the URL where our API web service um, is accessible and then we need a method to retrieve all our bookmark data sets we call that method get bookmarks okay and then we can implement that method and uh, it's basically very easy because we only need to call the web service now and uh, then return everything which uh, the web service delivers so um, let's say return this http because this is uh, the local uh, variable where we stored our service um, object and uh, then call the get method of the service. And the get method gets one parameter and that is um, <coughs> URL to our uh, REST service. So um, here with bookmarks URL, we have 
uh, specified uh, the URL where our service can be accessed. And now we are using exactly that URL string to pass it as a first parameter here to that method. Okay, and then <coughs> we need something um, from the RxGS library, and that is the map method, because with the map method, we can easily transfer the resulting um, string to an array of bookmarks. And we do that by saying, okay, bookmark array, this is a type, <coughs> and then accessing uh, the response as uh, in, in JSON format. So, and then we need one more thing here. Uh, we need the catch method. And uh, this is only in, in Z cases called when we have an arrow. So we pass in another method, handle error. And that's basically what we need to call the web service. Okay, and then as a the last part of our um, bookmark service class, we need to implement the uh, handle error method because we uh, used uh, that method uh, here uh, within the catch um, method call. And uh, this handle error message needs to be implemented so that it can be called to handle an error situation which might occur when we are accessing our web service. And for example, this web service is not reachable. So I've already prepared that method to um, do it very quickly here. So um, as you can see, it's a private method because handle error is only called uh, here internally, and it's getting a response object, uh, which uh, contains the error code and the error message. And basically what it does is printing it on the console and uh, throwing uh, it as a, as a return um, observable. So now that our bookmark service class is uh, ready and is managing the data access to our REST uh, based web service. Uh, we can switch over to app component, which is a main component of our Angular 2 application and uh, bring in the bookmark service because we want to uh, retrieve the data by using the service and printing out um, the, the bookmarks delivered by the service uh, within the template of app component. So, okay, here we can see uh, this is uh, the empty class app component. So nothing in the class so far and uh, nothing in the template. So first of all, we need to, um, to start with implementing the class and later on we will continue with the implementation of the corresponding template. So first thing we need is basically um, a class property which um, stores all the bookmarks which are returned and that is basically an array of type bookmark. So we call it bookmark and putting in uh, the type, so like so. And then um, we need a string for um, storing error messages which may occur and then we say constructor and uh, this constructor gets passed in um, as a dependency uh, the bookmark service class and we do that by saying private bookmark service this is a local um, class property as a local object um, um, to our service and we would like to get um, the bookmark service instance here. <coughs> okay, so this is basically the constructor we need. And then there is one more thing to, to add because we are using dependency injection here and uh, want the injector to be able to, um, to retrieve the bookmark service 
<coughs> class and creating an instance and returning that instance to uh, to be used here with bookmark service we need to um, configure the injector by um, adding in the component decorator section um, the providers array providers and uh, this providers it's an array so okay and this providers array is um, containing the bookmark service token and uh, so the token is uh, the same name as the class so bookmark service is resolved with the class bookmark service and uh, to um, enable the injector to find the bookmark service class the next thing we should do is to add the corresponding import statement so importing um, bookmark service from our file um, bookmark service and uh, together with bookmark service, of course, we need access to the bookmark uh, data model class. And uh, we will add the import statement for the bookmark class here as well. <coughs> the next thing uh, we implement in the app component class is a method which is called get bookmarks and this method is um, basically the place where uh, the uh, service access is implemented and we do that by um, accessing our service object and then uh, calling the get bookmarks service method we implemented in the bookmark service class and uh, this method is returning an observable object not a promise this time um, and uh, we can uh, we can subscribe to the results of the observable object by simply calling a method which is uh, named subscribe okay and uh, in uh, in subscribe we um, need to to handle both cases um, the first uh, case is a method we need um, when uh, the service um, call and the data access is done successfully and in this case we want <coughs> our um, bookmarks array to um, get all the bookmark data objects which are retrieved and returned from the service so this bookmarks is equal to bookmarks okay so the other case we need to handle is to pass in a method and um, in this case the method is handling an error state so it's error <coughs> this error message because we want to store the error message the error information in our error message string which we declared here as a class property So, okay, this is basically what we need here in um, app component to access um, the data service. So now we have the method in here, get bookmarks, and uh, we need to uh, define when this method should be called. And uh, we um, are not calling this method in the constructor, but we uh, use um, a lifecycle hook, which is called ng on init and uh, this <coughs> lifecycle method is automatically called after uh, the app component is um, is um, initialized and uh, ready and then we can use that point in time to execute um, the get bookmarks method 
Okay, the, the last thing we need actually to complete the implementation of our app component class is uh, the template we need to print the data we get from the uh, web service to print it out. And I've already prepared a simple template I will pass in the code here. And you can see it's just a, a list which is printed out. And in this list, we are iterating over the bookmarks uh, array with an ng4. And uh, then for every item in that array, for every bookmark returned from the service, um, we print out the title information and we print out the link to the corresponding URL here. Okay, now with the final implementation of app component in place, we are ready to uh, start uh, the Angular 2 application and to see the result in the browser. So I'll switch over to the terminal window. And uh, the first thing is we need to make sure that um, in the first terminal, our um, REST loopback uh, application is still running and accessible because now when we start up our Angular application, we try to access that service to retrieve the data. And in a second terminal window, we are now in the project folder of our Angular application and we can simply type npm start to start up the web server, which is hosting our application. And by starting up the server, you see uh, the application is automatically loaded in the browser. And as you can see here, we get the list of bookmarks retrieved from the web server. And at the moment we get only one result and that is the link we put in when setting up the loopback project. So to show you that we can just add a second link, we again can access the API Explorer here, um, clicking on the bookmark service, then uh, selecting the post, um, endpoint here for bookmarks and uh, by just copying this model scheme here into the data parameter we can add a, a second um, a second data set here um, this time we use wikipedia and uh, putting in the corresponding um, url and uh, with try it out, we um, just uh, um, sending it to the web server and you can see, okay, it was a result. And now just to, sh to uh, check, we try to get bookmarks. And here now we get two results and uh, the same result is now delivered to our Angular 2 application, as you can see here. So thanks a lot for watching. And uh, if you like this video, just uh, leave me a message um, on YouTube and uh, see you the next time.